Hello friends, long waited season 3 trailer has been released. It was released 3 hours ago and is trending pretty hot in the Korean gaming scene. The West is getting this around September unless the roadmap changes, so I would say it's around the corner. I want to review the video, add commentary, and speculate some important information I want to share. Before going over the video, I want to stress out the word optional because that word has been in my list of wishes. Keep that in mind while I commentate some of the speculated exciting things to come. Season 3 starts off with wrapping a long story, a war between heroes of Arcasia and Kazaros. We are basically going into the area where Kazaros is sealed. The main theme is an all-out war against the bad guys. The video starts off with some graphic improvements. NPCs like Shandi doesn't look like an N64 character anymore. It's good to see that they're trying to update outdated things. The new area, Kurzan North, will probably be an area with Adventure Tome, etc. because new field bosses exist. They didn't exist in the current Kurzan. This is the updated image of the Kazaros Warfield. It's basically the next UI to access all Season 3 key contents. We can see a Kidna Raid here, Behemoth Raid, New Guardian Ageros, and Ebony Cube. The Kurzan Frontline, Abedal Strat 1 and 2 is the new daily quest that replaces the Chaos Dungeon. Abydal Strat is set to be 1640 eye level and Abydal Strat 2 is set to be 1660 eye level. It is set to be once a day or once every 3 days with rested meter. The Kanuat Fortress is a new dungeon that we will be running to farm T4 gear. You can enter 3 times per day per character. People are assuming running this for the first week to finish your T4 gears. This scene is an example of Kurzan Frontlines, the new daily. I like how they're using a betrayal set. Something different here is the director did say we may stay at one place in the map, but it seems like we're traveling to a certain area like the bridge while waves of monsters appear. So I'm assuming it will feel like the third stage of Chaos Dungeon. This is an example of a new Guardian Raid. Weird thing is, Ageoros is a dragon type, but we see a scorpion-like dragon fighting the players. Funny enough, they also look exactly like all the Guardians from fighting Behemoth at Gate 1. My speculation is, maybe this Guardian is a shapeshifter into 4 Guardians that we fight against Behemoth, but I'm probably wrong. Here we see an example of Just Guard. Director said you will be pressing your G key to activate Just Guard. I wish they showed the UI, but I'm assuming they will show some sort of a tell and judgment should be somewhat lenient, because the Guardian pre-glows yellow first, then proceeds to attack. So maybe if you press G right before the attack animations happen, you may activate Just Guard. The demo of Kanuat Fortress is also shown, where you get your first T4 gears. This looks closer to a very casual dungeon than a hard boss fight. This is said to be solo or party play too. Ebony Cube is shown here as well, to mention there are new rooms and new difficulty, because the players are fighting Ren clone. The environment is a little different too, with glowing red electric field. I actually chuckled a little bit at the Gunlaster's back jump here, because I think they showed this on purpose. Next showcase is the third Awakenings. Since you have two Awakenings, they're showcasing additional Awakenings that they have not shown during Loa on, so we get to see some other cool effects and how they will be. I am pretty excited to see them hands on on my classes. Are you guys excited about any particular Awakenings? I think both Reaper Awakenings are definitely fire. Next showcase is the third awakening skills. Remember, we are also getting hotkey T skills. So these are not tripod related. There are additional skills we're getting on top of the big builds and playstyle changes. I'm actually curious what the bard one could be because it looks like another buff. So supports may get another buff skill on their T skill. Next is arc passive. Before commenting this, let me explain this very quickly. Arc passive is like rune system in League of Legends. Your armor will provide points related to combat stats. Accessories will give you points to allocate for class attributes. Brace this will impact your new awakening and T skills. This is why it's completely useless to buy class engraving books because they will not be used anymore when you transfer over to the new arc passive system. During my stream, I've mentioned multiple times that this is actually a really big deal because the director did say one of the example is having an attribute to have the gunlesser dash forward. So as a joke, I said things like maybe an artillerist can move slowly while transform. It seems like they did something else and they can teleport when they transform, which is crazy. With these possible changes, we probably have to go back to the drawing boards. But since we can freely allocate points, I don't know if we'll have multiple builds or maybe there will be one build that everyone's going to have because it's so optimal. But what's important here is we can freely allocate points without buying additional things. I hope it does too actually. And if it is, we will have so much freedom and have options to try different builds in various contexts. Content. One crucial thing I am really worried about is as a gunlesser main myself, I actually don't want to change my dash. I am used to the back jump and I like using it. If there are limited points and if the forward dash is grouped up with some additional attribute that increases damage or etc, we will be forced to have this passive up. It's not that bad, but I would be forced to do it. At the same time, if it allocates points, it may feel like a waste because you could allocate them on things that does more damage. 
So option is very important here because hopefully these type of playstyle only changes. They should be freely done without penalty or benefactor to give options to all players to be comfortable at their preferences and their playstyle. There's not much data from this, but looking at this more, Gunlancer's shield is red. Destroyer's electric field is purple, allowing to use skills on top of that. And Arcana having a blue Luin skill. Again, I'm pretty sure we're going back to the drawing boards to find good builds in Season 3, utilizing Arc Passive. And I think it's probably the most exciting thing for me for Season 3. What are some of your unique idea of changes you could speculate on your class? Next is solo content. These are examples of how single player raid will be. Seems like there will also be AI statues that will help you execute some mechanic. I am wondering if there will be death counts because I think it's fair to add maybe about 2 or 3. It's really nice that people will have an option to enjoy the game at their own pace and improve their characters. I just hope that solo modes rewards are not too bad compared to party play. If the options are solid, maybe there will be 2 group of player base that plays the game as a solo player versus players who raid with people. Because this game always provides catch up mechanics for returning and new players. So if there are people who really like the combat but hated the interaction with other players, they can always come back whenever solo mode updates into later raids. Next is the new island Crimson Nail Seashore, probably some island soul related stuff. As for life skills, the director did say they will improve overall all life skills. Currently excavate and fishing is the most efficient on their own topic. But since people will need those fusion materials, I believe they are making it more accessible to more new players. I personally just to excavate to burn my life energy as fast as I can because it's cheaper to make your own fusion materials. I hope this change makes things much easier for everyone. Next is the composing system. Personally, I don't care about this. I actually enjoyed this similar system in a different game called Bobby Nogi when I was a kid. There's also a music box update. I kinda like this for a breather, but I am not sure how many people actually finished them all. I realized I was the only few people in my static group who actually did them to get the bunny pet. The trailer shows Kazaros raid to wrap up. I am super excited about this raid. I have a static raid to go and we'll talk about it in a later video. I am progging as a raid lead with my gun lesser as usual and I am wondering if you're going to be there with new builds or T3 builds. Maybe in a couple of days I'm going to share the T3 wrap up, how my roster is showing before jumping into season 3. The basic synopsis is Akan revived again somehow and fights us with a new boss from the abyss, Egir. One thing I hope is that the OST will be different because the first gate fight is using a Khan Gate 2 OST. Second gate is where you get eaten by the giant and fight the core. The song is actually really epic and the raid style seems closer to Theomine than Echidna. I am so glad that they're taking this approach because the teamwork mechanic heavy raid is so tiresome when it becomes homework. I am pretty sure you guys are relatable on this topic. This raid kind of felt like an execution raid because if you look at this cube pattern, he shows the order of the explosion, cross the diagonal areas in order. So if you just need to stand on the latest one and spacebar to the cross, you can dodge the whole pattern. So therefore, this kind of feels like more of an execution raid than a mechanic heavy raid. They're showing few more footage of the story where there will be huge war between light and darkness. We get to see the dumb card we never want, Guardian Luin and Varkin. I am actually curious who would this be because it is shown in the trailer. Carmine is basically saying a great war will start here that will decide the fate, which is the main theme of season 3. So I am assuming we'll probably fight Echidna and Theomine again alongside an abyssal monster like Egir because the Braushaza version is coming around September. The trailer ends as Kazaros breaks his seal to revive again, so maybe the season will finish with fighting him. I don't know about you guys, but I am excited about this trailer. There are so many upcoming new things. I know some may be upset about the current situation about the game, but seeing one of the biggest changes in a game I've played for so long is definitely super hype for me. What are some of your most exciting things? Let me know in the comments. With that, I will end the review video here. Thanks for watching. Bye bye!